But no, I was proud of myself because there was a, oh, it's on the other side. Yeah, right there. Yeah, there was. How a, much did you pay for that god awful thing? Fifteen bucks. Ugh. Yeah, there was a stupid logo on here for like whatever the brand name was. So I just went on. Uh, thing. Fifteen bucks. Yeah, so I just uh, added. So I went on uh, Amazon and bought a six dollar iron on Packer patch. So you did it yourself. Iron on? Yeah. Oh, my 13 year old daughter helped me. Oh, I thought that was an actual. <laughs> no, no. There's a, there's this stupid logo that was like pink and all this all these other colors. So I said, "Fuck that! I'm gonna cover it up." Oh. That's a one of one. That's an original. You can't get that. Yeah, you're not gonna buy this. No. Wow. That's that's tailor made. <sighs> it's my eyes hurt. Seriously. <laughs> I'm just gonna look like this every now and again. Well, let's let's figure right. out. So we were talking about this bet. Yeah. Let's hammer this out here. We'll we'll figure it out when Matt's on the show. Yeah, but just to throw out some ideas in case Twist Nation wants to uh, chime in. That'd be great. So we saw this thing on, on uh, online and some ESPN shows were talking about it, where the loser of a fantasy league had to sit in a waffle house for 24 hours, but for every waffle he ate, an hour would get deducted. To which everyone thought that was amazing, and Mike and I immediately said, well, I'd be out an hour. Right. 100%. <laughs> you know, the only thing that sucks is that 24 waffle bill, and then coffee, and... Yeah, I wonder if they have, like, a special. Yeah. Is it, like, a buck a waffle? Is it going to cost me 100 bucks? Well, like... see, there's not a lot of waffle houses around here, but I think... Well, we wouldn't do a... We'd do a fucking IHOP. I was going to say, a... I think IHOP has, like, an all-you-can-eat... Oh, that'd be great. ...one day a week, you know? So if we could do that... You know, yeah, they'd get free pub, right? Because we go live. Yeah, we'd go. We'd go live. It's not gonna. It's not like we're going live for twenty four hours. It'll be twenty four minutes. Yeah, I'll eat a fuck. I'll eat a waffle a minute. Yeah, and be out. I'll put on a GoPro and everyone else can go on with their lives, and I'll be like, I'm paying the bill now. They're yeah, like, we'll fucking patch one of these cameras up to that ridiculous hat. Yeah. But yeah, you just get a little maple syrup. I'd probably have some like a side of bacon and sausage along with it. I'd have to take off the next two days, I think, though. Well, see, that's what I was saying before we started the show, is it would be a punishment for Mike if there's an asterisk on it, and it wasn't so much as you eating 24 waffles, it's that you couldn't go to the gym for a month I after. wouldn't do it. A month? <laughs> a month after. Oh, fuck I want you. That, I want that sitting in your gut. No, <laughs> a month. I wouldn't even do it if it was a week. Like, I would need to go the next day, and even if I was like, I had to get wheeled in because I was so full, at least I could sit in the sauna <laughs> and like have it sweat out of me, just waffle sweats. Oh. Yeah, there was back <coughs> back in Milwaukee. There was a place called the Prime Quarter, and I would eat a forty eight ounce steak, Texas toast, a salad, and um, a baked potato. And you eat it all? Oh, I, I did it like six or seven times. And like my buddies would ask me to come with because you'd get money off of your bill if you could do it. So I had like a I had like a bag of gold coins that was like, yeah, I did this. But it was like, um, what was I going to say? The next two days. Just having all of those meat sweats. I mean, you're actually you're sitting on the toilet sweating pretty much. Oh, I just pictured that a little bit. Gross. <laughs> what do you got there? Goldberry. Go for gold. I went. I got. I got two for um, when I went to Quick Trip when I had a little time to kill meeting you guys here, and it's not good. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was expecting like rave reviews. Yeah. So was I. Not. Immediately, it's just, not it good. As trash. he takes a sip, like, well, well I, I well, fucking paid. I paid for well, it. Yeah, I mean, there was, I don't know if you guys remember. I once purchased cucumber something Gatorade. Oh, and I, I choked it down because I, do I paid for that. It. See, that's why I don't. I don't go out on the limb on sites like nah. <laughs> but see, gold. I thought this was going to be more of like a pineapple mango type thing. Why would you think that? It says berry. Yeah. But this is like a dark berry. This is like a blackberry, and it, it's a very dark color. See, and I don't like the fact that they... You can't see what's inside. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You can't see the color. Yeah. Right. Oh, you can at the bottom there. Yeah, and I didn't do that. It's like a purple. Well, who does that? Yeah. Right. I mean, the other, but see... The if nuts, I see some guy in Quick Trip, you know, it's like, what are you fucking checking for? The golden ticket, Willy Wonka? Come right, on, man. wearing the hat that you're wearing. Oh, I yeah. I did not have this Get hat. in and get out. I didn't have this hat on when I went in there. I was just coming from work. Um, but the other one I got was a tropical, um, tropical pineapple. 
So it's like a strawberry pineapple type one. So that's a that that's a safe. So I'm glad I went with this one first. God, I just want a fruitopia now. Wow, a berry passion or what is that? Passion fruit. Passion fruit. Passion fruit's good. Oh yeah, we talked about it on the show. You can only buy it in like Canada, I think. Yeah. What we do a lot of is uh, at our house. We got those flavored water oh those flavored spritzers that you put in the water oh the drops yeah yep. if you put enough of that in you know yeah but i don't think you're then it's not good right. but vanilla orange is a good one disgusting oh, it's, it's, it's like a, a dreamsicle. dreamsicle yeah no i'm out are we all uh are we ready yeah, to? Ready. i'm waiting i'm waiting we're just waiting on you guys oh yeah oh. All right, well, i'm ready to rock let's bring let's it switch off then sweet and seth already chimed in so oh did he yeah i wasn't even paying attention hey seth What do you get when you put two, two Minnesotans, Minnesotans and a guy from Wisconsin together? Twist. The Week in Sports Talk. Get ready for some sports chatter where there's sure to be laughing, arguing, and maybe even crying. Now, now here are your hosts, Mike Reeves, Matt Benz, and Greg Green Bay Bauman. Bauman. What we, up? We got a Greg Green Bay Bauman sighting, Twist Nation. He's here, folks. He's here. We are we are Mattless, though. Matt is knee deep in ice cream and and pork roast right now. What is funny though? And Mike, Which take this a, a great place to be. <laughs> <laughs> knee deep in it. Mike, take this as a compliment. What's funny is we didn't do a show the past two weeks because you were busy, right? So when Mike's busy, we just don't do a show. <laughs> <laughs> Show's off, everybody vacay. When Matt or I are busy, it's just the two of us. But we are, you know how they have baby pools um, for people that are expecting a kid? You got to guess the day the baby's born. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a twist pool, and we're going to guess when the next time all three, all of, us three of us are together. I'm oh. guessing I'm guessing the week before the NFL season starts. <laughs> yeah, because then it's you can't really miss a week at that point. Yeah. And we've got the Greg hate coming in. Oh, that, that really. thank was, you, Chad. That thank was, you. That's a lot earlier than I thought it would come in. Is By that way, how you spell horrendous? I don't know. Oh, does the uh, put it up? I think there are two R's in it. Horrendous. I it looks. Right. Thing about it doesn't look right. I know. That's why I said that. I wonder it's if Facebook, good. when you're typing, so if it gives you the red squigglies, and you just pressed enter anyway. Because I, Chad, I love you, bud, but you don't know off the top of your head how to spell horrendous. Uh, that is that is the correct. Spell. He fucking googled it. <laughs> Chime back in and tell us the truth. You didn't know how to spell it. Yeah. By the way, um, this hat had this stupid logo. Underneath this, were we live when yeah, they we were, were live? When yeah, we were. Okay. don't please okay. don't okay. don't. don't. I was proud of myself. Don't, don't burden us with that story. <laughs> Episode sixty-seven, uh, Juneteenth, and I forgot his name. Bob Kuchenberg. Bob Kuchenberg. Yeah. What hurts? Offense guard, Dolphins, number sixty-seven. You had to dig into the archives to find that. Google. Okay. When you don't know Did something, you Google it, right, Chad? Did you just? Did you literally just say it, type in number sixty-seven in sports? I do. Yeah, famous. You know, the best athlete to wear which number? Okay. Bleacher Report, I think, has it. That's where I go. Okay. Every time. Okay. You know, the numbers I know, it's like boom. But sixty-seven. Yeah. Bob was the only one. Okay. There wasn't like a big row of them to yeah. choose from. It was just like Bob. What, what famous offensive guards have you know made a name for themselves? So happy Juneteenth, Greg. Yeah, Juneteenth. What is Juneteenth, Tevin? Uh, Juneteenth is like the whatever the not the is not the emancipation. It's like the whatever the abolishment last day of slavery or something. Nope. Like I feel like nobody really celebrates. Well, it the, just in the north, like down south, it's definitely a. Big, it literally big, hit big my Google calendar. Yeah. yeah. Well, and now, now it's, it's a federal now holiday. it's a national yeah, holiday. It's a federal holiday. So. Well, okay. So, so Tevin. For Twist Nation, who you, you can't see, Tevin. Tevin's black and he doesn't even know what the hell Juneteenth is. Greg, why don't you tell exact. Tevin what it is? So. On January 1st of 1863, that's when Abraham Lincoln abolished slavery. Exactly. That's exactly what I just said. But, <laughs> but, what, what but that, was, that was January 1st of 1963. But see, here's the thing that people don't realize. The southern states didn't acknowledge what Abraham Lincoln was doing. They didn't acknowledge him as the president or anything. So there was a guy who, on June 19th of 1965, drove to Galveston, Texas, and said, hey, by the way, guys, there's no more slavery. So then everyone in Galveston, Texas rejoiced, and from that day forward, it was known as Juneteenth because that was the day this guy showed up in Galveston, Texas, and said, hey, no more slavery. That's how simple this is. 
I mean, it's a great thing, right. but that's how simple the process was. Right. I mean, everyone's like, what's the story behind it? That's that, just, that's the day the guy showed up. Greg knows everything. Tevin, he just exactly. showed you up. Well, well, speaking of getting showed up by GBQ, oh, fuck you initials. <laughs> Woo! And you will be. I got an idea. So since Matt's not here, why don't we do all 12? See, best of 12. And honestly, today I was flipping through the cards. A lot of good cards today. All right, let's do we it. Could, we could we could definitely do it. All, all right, right, let's just do them all. Winner takes all. Yes, that's the twelve. And I really wish Benz was here for this because today's initials, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Benz, DP, oh DP, which I feel like speaks right to Mike's heart. I was gonna say, my mind went right to all things that Mike's gonna get before me. <laughs> All right, so let's kick this off with item number one. Clue number one, had a connection to Hootie and the Blowfish in 1995. Clue number two, connected to coconuts in an Adam Sandler film. Put the lime in the coconut. Clue number three, once explained playoff scenarios for the Denslo Cup. Denslo Cup. Clue number four appeared in the in 1998's The Water Boy. Mike Dan Patrick. Wow, oh. Mike off to a fast start. Oh. Wow, damn GBG. Take a couple weeks wow. off and you lose it. Wow, I'm a little nervous Item now. Item number two. Clue number one has been seen in music videos for Jay Z and Maroon Five. Clue number two has hosted a telev- televised award show. Mike Dolly Parton. Incorrect. Fuck. Incorrect. All right, bring the that rest. That was too. That was too quick. Bring the rest. That was too quick. Slow. Ease it down, Mike. Clue number three is connected to domain names. Fucking stare at you this whole time. Clue number four has connections to an NFL quarterback. Clue number five was a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. Oh, fucking A. And lastly, clue number six has been in the Indy 500 and Daytona 500. Fuck! Greg, Danica Patrick. There you go. I thought you'd get it after that. Wasted well, years of her Rogers. life with Aaron well, Rodgers. Well, that should have been a clue. I waited right. to listen to all the clues just to make sure. I didn't have competition after Mike said Dolly Parton. <laughs> right. Fucking A. Yeah, Doge isn't uh, chiming in early by any stretch. No, he's patient. not. How you doing up there? Clue Item number three, clue number one for DP. Connected to a standard work day. Clue number two. Connected to the first cloned mammal. Clue number three. Turned down offers to pose nude in... Greg, play- Dolly Parton. Mike, it was... Really- I know, and I did it for <laughs> you. God damn. Damn. He's rooting for me, Greg. I know. GB- GBG's up two to one. Here we go with clue or item number four. Clue number one. OJ Simpson's car chase led to record sales. Clue number two. Often goes by just the first word. Clue number three. Appeared in 1990s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Clue number four. Connected to red, white, and blue. Greg, Domino's Pizza. GBG's on fire right now. Three in a row for GBG with Domino's Pizza. Item number five, DP. Clue number one. Appeared in Back to the Future when Marty McFly was still in 1985. Mike, Dr. Pepper. Incorrect. Fuck! <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Clue number two. In 1990. All right, let's end this. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> in 1994. <laughs> Going home. Began a practice that would become an industry standard. Clue number three. Introduced in 1964. Clue number four. Connected to Ray Charles. Clue number five. Connected to Cindy Crawford and a vending machine. Dr. Pepper, man. And Didn't he do a Dr. Pepper commercial? And clue number six. Often oh, seen in silver, it. blue, diet white. Pepsi, diet Pepsi. Oh, I, uh, you were so. He close. did do the com- <laughs> son of a. Oh. Uh, you were. I was. I was excited. I thought you were about to get it after one clue. Oh, I'd quit. Clue number one is a reference to Domino's. Clue number two is sometimes used in ads, offers, or coupons. Clue number three. They are recorded. Greg, double points. Incorrect. Yeah, fuck off, Greg. 
Fog. Clue number four. Often seen on diamonds. Clue number five. Connected to turning two. And clue number six is the act of making two outs during the same... Oh, Mike, a double play. There we go. Mike is back in it with two. GBG with four. Yes. Clue Four? Number, yeah, yeah he's, oh, he's been racking them up. Gross. Clue number one. Iceman freezes one of these in X2, X-Men United. Clue number two. Spider-Man practiced on one in 2002. Clue number three. Their slogan was read by Johnny Five in 1986's Short Circuit. Clue number four. Forrest Gump claimed to have had about 50... Mike! Mike, Mike was first. <laughs> Dr. Pepper. There we yes! go. Oh, he's back in it. Don't call it a comeback. Baby. <laughs> oh, oh, let's go. Forrest Gump. Oh, I see. And the thing is, after the first clue, I was going for it. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't do it again. And then, it, and then the second... <laughs> Yeah, Forrest did. I didn't think Corey Cove would do two sodas in the same set of clues. That's why I thought, okay, he doesn't have Dr. Oh, Pepper. see, that's what you need. Greg just overthinking yeah, yeah, everything. Overanalyzing God. everything. Here we go. Um, here we go. Clue number one. We have Mike with three and GBG with four. One was seen in, in a 1955 Disney classic. Clue number two. Connected to the 1992 album, The Chronic. Clue number three. Connected to Arsenio Hall. Greg, dog pound. I really thought Mike was going to get yeah, that Yeah, see? One. I really thought Mike was going to get that one. But good for GBG. Well, look at his hat. I mean, look at that uh, thing. That's that true. All right, we've got how many? Let's see. Six left. It's like fucking Weird Al. Wait, six, Yanka, uh, is Greg. it five to two? It is. No, five I got three. To oh. Three. Oh. Slow down, yeah. Greg. One, right. two, three, four, five, six. Yep. All right, clue number one, connected to Chicago. Clue number two, connected to a 1999 Tom Hanks film. Clue number three, connected to Southern Methodist University in 1987. Greg, death penalty. That a boy, Greg. <laughs> oh, now he's on your side. I <laughs> I mean, I'm not, if I'm waiting for you to get the points, we're going to be here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with three. We, we can... I mean, if you run the table, I believe you tie. I don't know. What is it? 7-3? Seven, 7-3. Three? Seven, three. No, if you run the table, you win. No. Yeah, we g- there's 12. We're at 10. No. be 7-5. Oh, maybe maybe, there's, more in te- maybe there's more than 12. Oh. Yeah, it's 6-3. Okay. 6-3. to three. Here we go. All right. So, oh, never mind. Yeah, you cannot. You cannot win. <laughs> Just because I know GBG is going to get a couple of these that you're not going to get. <laughs> oh, okay. Bring it on. <laughs> Here we go. Clue number one, connected to a microwave. Clue number two, connected to Big Ben. Clue number three, connected to a worm. Clue number four, connected to bad boys. Clue number five. Royal blue, chrome, navy blue, white, and red. And lastly, clue number six was involved in the malice at the palace. Greg, Detroit Pistons. There we go. GBG extending the lead. You tried. I mean, honestly, three's good. Three's good. My mind went the wrong way when it Big Ben. I was thinking Roethlisberger, not Wallace. I I, I figured I would throw you guys for (laughs) loop. Clue yeah, number- me too. That's what happened. <laughs> Clue number one. Connected to a mistake on an office space. Clue number two. Has a connection to pie. Greg. Clue number three. Connected to comedian. Greg. Decimal point. So 3.14. My name's Greg. <laughs> Fuck. God, you're such a fuck face, Greg. I hate you. <laughs> Next up for DP, clue number one. Debuted in 1968. Greg did. Clue number two <laughs> is in the Hall of Fame. It's definitely not Greg. Clue number three. Connected to Hush. Clue number four. Has a connection to White Snake. Clue number five. 
The Guinness Book of World Records once called them the globe's loudest band. Mike, donkey punch. <laughs> Surprisingly, not in any of these cards. We're what? Gonna throw that out there. What? Unbelievable. <laughs> Lastly, clue number six, most well known for their classic hit, Smoke on the Water. Five. Oh, Doge. Four. Three. Two. I don't know. One. Doge with Deep Purple. Oh. No, I, I, I listen to AM Talk Radio. Yeah, I'm not a big music guy from the 70s. Couldn't point Deep Purple out of a two band lineup with fucking the Jonas Brothers. No. Uh, Deep Purple. What a number, horrible name. Yeah. Right. Clue number one. Sounds like a medical condition. <laughs> Eric Cartman f- appeared on this during an episode of Comedy Central's South Park. Clue number two. His football team once lost 100 to 6. Clue number three. Once famously visited Britney Spears in her hospital room. Clue number four. Has aired over 2,000 episodes. Clue number five. Connected to Oprah Winfrey. Greg, Dr. Phil? Correct. One last question or one last clue for Mike to try and... Same yeah. face. Yeah. Give here me Jack for the rest of the show here. <laughs> here we go. Clue number one. Had its window smashed in an in an iconic film. Clue number two. First appeared in 1940. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Clue number three. Has a connection to a globe. Clue number four. Gene Hackman once stood on it or stood in it. Clue number five. Mike. I I got it. Superman. Uh, the correct answer is Daily Planet. Yeah. See, fucking yeah. Superman. Give it to me, Tevin. Go. Look at me. Look at me. You know what? <laughs> Your money. You know what else? You're a big winner. Congratulations, You're GBG. You're a big winner. It's probably the easiest win you've gotten. Superman. Easiest? What do you mean? Well, he's got the first one. Like. It's yeah. going to be a dogfight. Whatever. Yeah. I have like three wins total ever. Yeah, but they, those three that you got were fucking impressive. They were. And I wasn't here for them. No, I beat you. No, you didn't. I beat you. Did you beat me at one? Yes. We'll have to go through the archives. Yeah, we'll have to look through the archives. But, uh, I did make I a, did. I've beat you one time. I did make a list. And yep. for Tevin's sake, I did asterisk each one that Mike or Matt won where I wasn't here. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and just looking at those, let's see. Does Doge have more wins than Mike? No. Uh, Doge, no. Doge, ooh. I think we're tied. Doge has three wins, according to my records. You're, do you haven't updated that yes, thing I in have. months. I update it every week. I update it every week. And we have Doge has one, two, three. I have and four. Let's look for Mike. One, Why are you laughing? Two, three. He has, they're tied. They're tied. You're tied with a cardboard cutout. <laughs> <laughs> who can't answer. The only way he gets a point is if everybody else in the game doesn't get it right. We get it, Greg. <laughs> Let's move forward here with the show. You fucks. I wonder if Matt's watching. And this is the last time we do a show with just GPG. <laughs> All right. Next up, we've got... Um, what do we have next? The Twist Topics. Ooh, these are good topics. Twist Topics of the Week. Let's get it started. Did I give you those? Um... Pull up the email. Yeah, you got them. Let's see, I think I, I, think I got some notes here. Mm-hmm. I got it on my phone if we need it. We got long bumper music, I guess. Yeah. Here we go. Now I'm a professional. Beautiful. There we go. All right. Topic number one. We have the. Great Coach K for the Duke Blue Devils has announced that it is his final season. Yeah, you can tell that we've been off for a few weeks. Because yeah. <laughs> this is old news, but I uh, definitely wanted to touch on it. I, I just really wanted to ask you what you think about heir apparent. Well, what I... John Shire. Yeah. So when you realize how old Coach K is, I mean, this has been going He started on- coaching since before I was born. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, crazy. He co- uh, Bob Knight coached him at Army, and then he immediately went in to become an assistant for Bob Knight, and then that's when he took over for Duke, blah, blah, blah. But he started at um, 
you know, West Point. But I mean, he's in his seventies. So yeah, go retire. He does. He looks like he's fifty-five. I know. I know. I mean, that 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 must be some strong ass hair dye that he's got. Oh in. God. But here's the thing: is for the longest time, the idea was that Steve Wojciechowski was going to be, you know, the heir apparent, and then Marquette opened up, and then Steve went there. But at that point, you always knew that whoever was going to take over for him was going to be his top bench guy when he decided on it. So I don't think it's a matter of, is this guy the most qualified? It's just he happened to be sitting in the seat when Coach K said, you know what, enough's enough. Right. Yeah, so he was, let's see here, two-time captain during his four years at Duke, 06 to 2010, joined Duke's coaching staff 2014, and just risen up the ranks. It says he was instrumental in getting Jason Tatum and Zion Williamson. So maybe he's a, a very strong recruiter. I don't know. Yeah, and you know what? He looks like a Duke coach. He looks like a Duke coach, and if he's bringing in these guys, Tatum, Zion, all these other guys that are one-and-done type guys, I think that's when Coach K said, you know what, this isn't my type of game anymore. A hundred percent. He likes the program mm-hmm. of Duke and being able to mold these you know, boys yep. into men. Yep. And the one that he's like, fuck this. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to yep. go hang out with my family. I didn't know he was that old. So yep. it's like when I heard he started coaching there in like 80 or 84 or whatever it was, I'm like, good God. Yeah. They must have something in the water there. At Duke. No, yeah. Blue water. Cool. All right, next topic, uh, we have Brad Stevens, who I believe was about to get fired as the Celtics coach and then magically gets promoted to GM. What What are you guys' thoughts on him getting a promotion after having a terrible season? Well, well he's, he's already going to get fired. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is... You see that trade he pulled off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what was... How do you give up Kemba Walker and a first-round pick? I get it, you don't want to pay the salary, but... But you're giving up a first round pick, and then when the, the compensation he's getting back is like in 2025, and it's a it's a second round swap. Yeah. But doesn't Al Horford have a horrible contract, or maybe is there one year I, less? I, probably, probably like a, a year less on it. But the thing about so Brad Stevens has been, you know, we've heard the name forever. Right. He's six months younger than me, so he's taking over the highest position at one at one of the two best you know basketball franchises. Yeah. They're gonna, if he does well, he'll have a statue. So exactly. So maybe he's been groomed for this. But the the, the interesting thing is, what direction is he going to go into? Does he take a seasoned coach like Carlisle, who's now available, or do you go with someone like Sam Cassell, who's got no experience, but he has you know the cachet in Boston? Tevin Brad Stevens doesn't look like he's in his eighties, does he? <laughs> no, I was like, when did he turn seventy five years old? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jeez, he must have gone to Duke and drank that water, too. Just a little younger than Greg. He's wow. been purified in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. Good wow. God. Uh, yeah, I screw the Celtics. I mean, I can't believe Danny Ainge's ego stepped down, to be honest. And Brad Stevens, like, he's already shown in his first move that he has no idea what he's doing. Yeah, so, yeah that, that, I did not understand that. Yeah, Jason Tatum, just come to the Wolves. That's all I care yeah. about. Yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath for that one. Yeah, okay, um, well. N- next up, we have a bunch of Alabama quarterbacks in the NFL, Mac Jones, Tua, Jalen Hurts. Which of them has the best NFL career? Joe Burrow. <laughs> so, which Alabama quarterback has the best future? Oh. I picked the guy from LSU. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was not listening. I was so excited to answer the question. So yeah. my thing is, and I, there's his name right there. So <laughs> we'll get to Joe Burrow. Calm down. I don't think that any of these quarterbacks are going to light the world on fire. However, what I do think is to answer the question, it's going to be the quarterback who's in the best position. And I don't think that Jalen Hurts is in a good position. I think that um, the Eagles are a dumpster fire. I think that Tua is already hearing. You know, I mean, it's one thing to be in New York and to get all that criticism because you're in a big market. Two is getting it from all over the nation, you know, about whether or not he was worth it. So I think that Mac Jones is in the best position, and I think that he's going to be the most likely to succeed. But when I say succeed, he'll be a top 10 quarterback. Weird, Tevin. How did I know he was going to pick the white guy? (laughs) Well, I mean, in his defense, when Tua gets on national television and goes, yeah, I really didn't know any what I was doing last year. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Tua's horrible. Yeah. I I wanted the Vikes to get Jalen Hurts. At least Brett Favre waited till his career was over to say I really don't know how to read a defense. I mean, he at least waited until his right. career was over. Uh, no, I'm going to go Jalen Hurts. I think they got you know Devonta Smith added that Miles Sanders. You know, I I just like him, and Mac Jones. He just 
There's some his. What's his real name? McCorkle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust a guy named McCorkle. Is that his real name? Yeah. It's like, no just, way. It is. Google it. It's McCorkle Macaroni Jones. Yeah. Then I'm, I might have to change my vote because I thought if his real name was Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Fourteen inch cock. <laughs> Huge swag. Yeah, it's like his his first name is actually M A C K, but he just goes um, M A C yeah. for short. It's it's Michael McCorkle Jones. Yeah. So yeah, Mac the combination of both. McCorkle. There. But Michael is technically his first name. Great so you're first. Gonna, you're gonna hate on a you're gonna hate on a fellow Mike. He doesn't go by it. How? So he don't. We don't claim him. We're gonna start calling you Mac. Yeah, you should. I'm gonna start calling you McCorkle. <laughs> you, fuck you, will. Which is funny because you look like a McCorkle in that hat. Which is funny because your middle name is Christopher, so your name hey, is actually Christopher Reeves. You fucking no, <laughs> no. My whole life I've dealt with this. He's a Reeve. Oh, that's that's true. He's got an S on his chest, not his last name, Greg. <laughs> For the sake of the bit, yeah. This is no, great. no, Own it. It's, yeah, no. <laughs> fuck off, both of you. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of. Fucking off. Fuck it off. <laughs> Fuck it off. And Joe Burrow, since you wanted to bring up quarterbacks that were drafted number one overall in the 2021 draft, there are obviously a lot of quarterbacks taken in the first round. Rank, what are your power rankings? Who do you who would you have on your team if you could do it all over again? What? That's not the question, Tevin. Well, it's Essentially, the it question says, it says rank the 21, 2021 starting. Okay, so from all the quarterbacks number drafted number one overall. Yeah, so who, since, who do you want? Oh, since like up through 2021? Yeah. Yeah. Rank 2021 NFL starting quarterbacks that were drafted number one overall. So I'll give you the list. We got Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff, Cam Newton, Kyler Murray, Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow, Baker Mayfield, Jameis Winston. I'll go from the bottom to the best. Okay. So I will go Jared Goff in last place. Yep. Then I would go. Jameis Winston. Then I would go Cam Newton. Baker Mayfield, Matthew Stafford, Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow, Kyler Murray. I the only the only reason I would disagree is I'm thinking about the situations they're in. I would put Matt Stafford number one overall. Oh God. M- Matt Stafford just has the is most. Is that your go to line when you're being a racist? Yeah, I'm gonna pick like, the white guy. Well, no, because I put situation. I put Kyler Murray number two because of the situation they're in. No, I, and that's right because he's in the he's in L.A. now. Yeah, I would put Jared Goff last. I just look Detroit at the be- who I who I think is a better quarterback. But you're right, situation. That's why I don't. That's why I really don't think that you know Trevor Lawrence oh, is. Fuck I mean, my list then. Greg. He he will be good in like five years from now. No. Once they fire Urban Meyer and actually bring in a professional football coach. Oh my god. Who All does right. it? Who does? Or Tim Tebow will be starting at quarterback for the end of the season because he'll get hurt. Because you drafted him, so that's what you're trying to just will it into existence. Yeah. And Andrew Luck's going to come back, <laughs> and that hat's going to be cool. Yeah. All those things are going to happen, Greg. This hat is cool. All right. Well. All right. Well. Last topic. Who wins the NBA championship this year? The healthiest team. I'm I'm rooting for the Suns. I Hardcore like, rooting for the Suns. I'm obviously rooting for the Bucks, but I would be happy as long as the I think the three worst human beings on the planet all happen to play for the same team. Yeah, I and hate I the want Nets. them eliminated tonight. I hate the Nets. Yeah, I I just think that Kevin Durant is a whiny little bitch, and if you are a multi, multi, hundred plus millionaire, you need burner accounts on Twitter to be able to defend yourself. And then Kyrie Irving thinks the world is flat, so that tells you his level of intelligence. And James Harden s- sabotaged himself out of you know to get out of uh, Houston you yeah. know, by putting on weight and not playing and all this stuff. You know why you're hurt right now, there, dipshit? Because he didn't give a fuck earlier in the season. You know what? I used to like James Harden until he started doing the twisties. Oh, yeah. and it just looked weird with that. You yeah. need like a tight fade with a huge beard, and like yeah. he started doing these weird haircuts, and nah, I don't know. So I don't like him anymore because yeah. of his hair. That's a good reason. His top hair. You know, I heard a really good point on uh, Sports Talk Radio. They were they were talking about like Ben Simmons and Giannis and the expectations put on them by the media, us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, how we want them to be and who they really are. Yeah. You know, it's like they get 
the max contract, two hundred million. It's like, well, they didn't pay themselves that money. Yeah, right. Giannis didn't vote for himself to be the MVP. These are other people putting that stuff on him, but that doesn't make Giannis the number one on a team who can put them above and beyond. You know, and Chris Middleton showed he's he's the only reason that they're gonna oh yeah the win. I mean, he can't shoot free throws. He can't shoot threes. Ben Simmons in an elimination game. Scored nine points yesterday, or six points. And Steve Nash actually said, we now have to take him out of the game when it's a close game at the end because they're going to intentionally foul him. But to your point, and I agree with you, they were talking about Ben Simmons having the third worst free throw percentage for someone who's shot in over 60 free throws in in an NBA playoff season. And the only two that were worse were Shaquille O'Neal and Will Chamberlain. And a big guy, they've done the like the the sports science on it that if you're over a certain height it's actually extremely difficult to shoot a free throw because it's not a natural movement and they're like well ben simmons isn't that tall and blah blah, blah. i'm like he's 6'10 but here's the thing look back at his career he's never been a good shooter so to your point when you draft him you draft him based on what you know about him he's never been a good shooter and he so, might never be. Yeah. So what do they think is going to happen? It's like, well, if we draft him third overall, um, he'll just automatically become a great shooter. No, he's not a good shooter. I mean, he didn't draft Dennis Rodman, to pull, or he didn't pick up Dennis Rodman because he can score 40 points for you. No, you did it because he can get 20 rebounds. Yeah, he's a Ben Simmons is a 6'10 point guard who can drive the hoop, who's a f- facilitator, a ball handler. And an amazing defender. He's great at what he does, yeah. but then we put this expectation on him, like, well, he can't shoot free throws, he can't shoot a three, like, he sucks, he's a dud. It's like, well, no, 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 no. That's not who he is. Like, build around what type of player he is. Build around Giannis and the type of player he is. Giannis is proven, and I love Giannis. Mm-hmm. He's a freak. That's his name, Greek freak. Yeah. But he's not the LeBron who can, you know, take – just take it over and win it for you. Yeah. Like he is who he is. And I feel bad for players like that where it's like the expectation's so high based on what you can be and not who you are. Yeah. And like after game five, and they're like, well, why didn't Giannis guard Durant at the end? It's like, and we'll get into it and tweet or retweet. PJ Tucker has literally been the worst possible thing that's happened to Kevin Durant in the past. Like, yeah, three he's months. a great defender. So him. it's like, why would you put Giannis on him if PJ Tucker has been driving Kevin Durant nuts? Well, it's for like the a past- video game. It's yeah. like, let's just put the two best players who we yeah. want to see guard each other. It's like, <laughs> shut isn't, the fuck up. This isn't fifth grade basketball when you look across and like, okay, that guy's my height. Yeah. So Match I guard up. him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. All right. Next up, we have honestly the segment that I've been looking forward to. Me too. All week. The Packers predicament. And I got to say, uh, give a shout out here to Abby Marouche of uh, Daily and Marouche PLLP Law Firm. You can Google them. You can Facebook them. Look them up. Free, free ad right there. So she texted me a month ago or three months ago. Last time Greg was seen on Twist. And says, can you guys do a special? She wanted us to do a whole show. Basically, where it's an apology segment or whatever you're about to do. So I told her yesterday, I said, we're not, there's no way in hell I'm doing a whole show with the Packers. But I gave Greg a segment. So, Greg? First of all, I think that Abby's going to love this because Abby was or is my family attorney. And, uh, I think that honestly, she wants to see how well I can bullshit my way out of something. <laughs> but okay, so three things I want to bring up when it comes to the Packer predicament in dealing with Aaron Rodgers. Number one is I believe that all of a lot of this is created by the media because we now have the NFL Network. We have um, six ESPNs, five different Fox Sports. You need content. So number one, what happened at the draft? The first thing that happened, two players were drafted this year that drew the ire of Packer fans. Number one is Fields was taken by the Bears, and then Mond was taken by the Vikings. Both quarterbacks, but what did the media focus on? Oh, well, they called Kirk Cousins, and they called Andy Dalton. Well, no shit that the Vikings and the Bears are going to say that. They want this, you know, they want this division between the Packers. Do you think... If everything wouldn't have happened with Jordan Love last year, the Vikings would have given a shit to tell Kirk Cousins. Hold on, hold the fuck on here. It what? Do not, do not tie us in no. to your negligence. 
okay, of no. not calling. No, we did it because we're a good organization, and that's what you do. Hey, did Kirk, we're drafting that? a guy in the third round. Just to let you know, he's not taking your job. But did, he's we're, he's we're gonna did you work ever, him up? Did you ever see this? Is they the, didn't draft. They didn't trade up in the first round, crazy. which they tried to to take Justin Fields, and that would have been fine. Did you did you um, ever see the a, most the most inaccurate but funny movie draft day? You know I have, Greg. Okay. I hate We that. talked to it's, each other on the phone while we are both watching it at okay, the same time. Okay, first of all, at what point did Kevin Costner have a chance to call up, um, what's his name, um, the the quarterback? You know, when they were yeah, moving I, up and all that stuff. You don't have time. Don't so, you? But you so, have somebody in the organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 kid, the, yeah. the kid who was playing right. an hey, intern. Timmy. The kid who was Give playing an intern. And yeah, he'd be like, um, yeah, he told me to go have sex with my mother, and my mother is not with us anymore. <laughs> you know, that was the line in the movie. Okay, moving on from that. Number two, everyone keeps bringing up, well, they took the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands in the fourth quarter when they were down by eight, and they kicked the field goal. Before you were fourth and eight from the eight, you were first and goal from the eight. You could have ran it in. Then you were second and goal from the eight. Then you were third and goal from the eight. And Aaron Rodgers has stated that Matt LaFleur did give him the ability to call the third down play. He called anything he wanted to. He could have ran in for the touchdown. He could have ran for four yards. I've watched this play a thousand times. The least he would have gotten would have been four yards. Realistically, he would have gotten six or seven. But he probably could have scored a touchdown, to be honest with you. But they did the field goal on fourth and eight. Why? Because Aaron Rodgers, you just had three chances to gain an inch, and you couldn't gain a freaking inch. At no point did Aaron Rodgers give them the idea that, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to move the ball down the field and try to get a little bit at a time. All we have, we have four downs to get this. Yeah, you know what you do? You don't get four downs to get eight yards. You get two, get two, get two. And what do you do on the last one? You get two more. Then you score a touchdown. But here's my big one. Hold on. I'm going to chime in here too, Greg. Okay. So last time I checked, uh, football's a team sport. Yes. Okay. Well, that sounded very directed at Aaron Rodgers. Yes. So it's Are he's upset with him? he's no. one man, and he. No, I'm pretty I'm sure. I'm pretty sure he won the MVP last year. I'm pretty sure he won you a Super Bowl. Are you one of those Packer fans that go pack means go pack your bags? Aaron? No, no. What I'm saying is that this stuff is made up by the media because even Aaron Rodgers has. has you just said you watched that play a thousand times and yes. you pointed the finger at one man in yes. the team sport. Because Wait. because I don't think that he's ever complained about it. Mm. He's never complained that you know. Okay. So they. But number this, this Tevin, is, Tevin's trying to so, get in here. Um, GVG, this all sounds great, uh, but you sound like every Packer fan that I had known in my life since this has happened. He didn't. He doesn't drink his sipping tequila and make that such a big deal on draft day, if he's not bothered. He doesn't wear an "I'm offended" shirt to a national TV interview if he's not bothered. He doesn't hold out and not show up to mandatory mini camps and training camps if he's not bothered. I think that he does not play another snap in green and gold. I'm getting to that. Yeah, the the, okay. me, the media can't twist right. what Aaron's saying. Okay. First, and then the next thing, people are okay. saying, people are saying, oh, he's just going to quit playing in close jeopardy for twenty million dollars a year. That would literally be like this. This would be the same thing as me and Matt talking to our friends on Facebook and all over, saying Mike's going to go on KFan. Mike's parents, who employ him right now, would be like, well, we've never heard about this, and KFan would be like, hey, we've met the guy. He's a nice guy, but. We really don't have this spot open. Nobody in Jeopardy has ever said that Aaron Rodgers would host Jeopardy permanently. Here's what's going to happen. They're either going to get Ken Jennings, who was the all-time champion, or the crowd now that the favorite would be LeBron, Le, uh, Burton, uh, Le, LeVar Burton, whatever his name is, the guy from Reading and Rainbow. He's the guy that they've had pegged to do this since before Alex Trebek even died. The guy with the sweet sunglasses from Star Trek. Yes, but my point is, Having someone like Aaron Rodgers for two weeks was a great boost in radiance, but you're never going to have someone like that do the show. Now, they, they film five episodes in a day. So you could, Aaron Rodgers could come and do this in the offseason for you know 10 episodes, two weeks worth of shows. And it would be fun and everyone would like it. And you could do it with some of the other hosts like Milan Bialik, who did it and everyone thinks that she was the top person to do it. Um, she's uh, Amy Farrah Fowler from... Um, Big Bang Theory. Oh, um, but she everyone or says it, Blossom. Oh, Blossom. Yeah, but she was she was the best one. Well, pick the more relevant show. A Blossom is the most relevant. Whoa, Joey. Um, bottom line is he's not hosting Jeopardy. But here's my thing: 
I hope that what happens is either Aaron Rodgers says, you know what, this is my best chance to win the Super Bowl. I'm going to go back to Green Bay. <laughs> but if he doesn't, and if he demands a trade, don't trade him this year. You know why? Because you're going to trade him for three first-round draft picks at the end of the year. So why go to, let's just hypothetically say, the Broncos, where the Broncos would be a better team with him. Broncos with Drew Luck, four wins. Broncos with Aaron Rodgers, hypothetically, let's say 11. You get a worse draft pick from the Broncos. Let him sit his ass on a beach with Shinea Woodley, whatever the hell her name is, and sit there, sit on the beach. Broncos suck this year. You get a good draft pick for the next couple of years, and then you know send them off. But honestly, I think a lot of this is smoke and mirrors. You're not going to walk away at the age of 37 years old and not collect that money. You're just going to have a handshake agreement that you're going to play this year for the Packers. They're going to move money so there's not as much guaranteed, and then you're going to trade them at the end of the year. That's what I'll tell you right now. Bank it. That's what's going to happen. He's going to play for the Packers. I, I'm telling you, he's going to play for the Packers this year. He probably will show up halfway through training camp. Should we? Uh, okay, we were talking about this food bet. Rather, this is bet? no. I think this is bigger than a fishbowl bet. What do you think, Greg? Well, I need something on the other side of this bet. Well, I'm I'm saying that burger. Like I'm saying, Jordan Love takes more snaps for the Green Bay Packers. I don't think I don't think Aaron Rodgers play. I think he sits out and eats the money. And if they, I agree with you. I don't think they'll trade him this year. I think they'll wait, and I don't think he'll play. I think I. He will be under center week one for the Packers. You want to do the burger? Yeah. Okay. We'll do the burger. Losers got a two pounds of a 15 inch loaf with four eggs, four eggs, fries, the the only pork, the only pulled pork from B52s. It's $37.99. If you eat it under an hour, you get a t shirt. Mm hmm. If you don't eat it under an hour, you get a fishbowl of water thrown in your face too. <laughs> so we'll we'll do it, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll all go out to eat. But so week- this will be great because we'll know by week one. Yeah, yeah, we can even go for a, you know for a game, go there, watch the game, and I or you would have to eat the burger. Yeah, could you imagine GBG's watching week one as Jordan Love is throwing three interceptions and and he's got to eat a two pound <laughs> fifteen <laughs> inch. Well, it's just it's just two pounds of meat. There's still a whole bunch of pulled pork. I if you read that thing, that's like four and a half pounds. Yeah, of food. mother, Google it. Mother of all burger challenge B fifty two on the line for the Packer bet. Yes, I didn't think we were going to get this quick and do it. We're still going to do. The long play, like the IHOP one, yep. we'll get, got to get Matt involved, got to get Tevin involved in that one. That one's cooler. Here we go. <laughs> Mother of all burger challenge. An Invergrove. Two pounds of burger, four eggs, cheddar, barbecue pork, pepper jack, onion tanglers, and bacon. Oh, I didn't even know the bacon. Served on French low, 15 inches. Holy hell, look at that thing. I might have to like that is a massive. That's a good looking burger sandwich. That thing's huge. But honestly, like from the picture, I I feel confident that I could eat that. It's like a big Subway sub. Well, those are twelve inches, so add three. It is, yeah, it's a lot in an hour too. So it's like, but but Tevin, like you were saying before the show, and the difficulty says it's only two stars. So maybe this isn't as hard as we think. But yeah, but Tevin, look at the amount of bread in that. Yeah, that's a lot of bread. That's a lot of bread. Difficulty, okay, so two stars compared to what? Six yeah. pounds of burger challenge that Greg was talking about? Yeah. Like, bullshit, that's two stars. I'm going to have my own fucking challenge difficulty. Like in the great outdoors, the old 96er. It's like, yeah, that, that's called impossible. It's like, what, what do you, yeah, what, what do you get a star for? Oh, God. Whether or not someone died? I will hate Aaron Rodgers and the Packers even more if he suits back up because I do not. I've always thought about doing it, but that's way too much food. I do not want to do that. I know you can, so you'll do it. Oh. Good stuff. So that's what you got. I might do it with you if you lose. <sighs> no. <laughs> Fuck you. Just to prove a point. Yeah. I got Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback, and I outdid you in the burger challenge. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He'll race me. All right. Now we've got the twist bracket of the week, and this week's Ooh. bracket is the most annoying people in sports media. Greg Bauman. Right, I'll say GBG did not make the final <laughs> list of 64. Damn Lost it. in the play in round. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so, first up, uh, and there's no quadrants or anything like that. They just list all these people out. So, okay. first up, we have a number one seed, Stephen A. Smith versus Chris Collinsworth. 
Okay, so we're picking the one that we hate the most. So this isn't the people we like. Right. At yeah, the end, the most we want annoying. Then it's Stephen I, A. Smith. It is Stephen A. I like Stephen A., but he, he's damn annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mel Kuyper versus Tony Kornheiser. Tony Kornheiser. He's just a bit, bitter, bitter old man. He is, but I, Mel Kuyper is more annoying. Even even when I have to stare at him, he's just got, yeah. For me, it's Mel. What do you got, seven? Ugh. Like and I like both of these guys. I like I both really too, but either of them, them them that annoying. But I'll go with I'll go with Mel Kiper just because he's a know it all. We'll go with Mel. He is a know it all. Uh, we got Kurt Schilling versus Danny Cannell. I'm going Danny Cannell just because I really love Kurt Schilling's politics. Danny, we'll go Danny Cannell. Uh, Mike Lupica versus Gus Johnson. I don't know either of them. Gus, um, I'm gonna go Lupica because Lupica's. Lupica is one of these guys that is just sits on his New York patio and yep. bitches about what's wrong with society. He's a New York sports writer. Mm. Gus Johnson's a basketball guy. Yeah, yeah. Gus John- an amazing. Yeah. Bad, okay, bad Lupica. Play by play. Lupica. All right. Uh, we got Dan Lebetard versus Katie Nolan. I like Levitard, so I gotta go Katie. I was gonna say I'm gonna go Katie too, just because I love Levitard's dad. His dad. That's what I was just gonna say. He's got a sweet dad on the show. Oh, Poppy. Yeah. But I fucking love Katie Nolan. Well, she gone. Well, Bill Walton. Oh, she's moving on. Bill, yeah, she's moving on. Oh, Bill yeah. Walton versus Joe Buck. Joe Buck. No, Bill Walton. I can't stand Bill Walton. I hate Joe Buck. This Fuck is Joe Buck. This is really tough because I Bill, hate. I Joe hate Bill. Buck. I, I hate, hate Bill Joe Walton Buck too because of his Packers just love that he shows every time he does one of their games. But Bill Walton is so bad. He's to bad. To. Yeah. So I have to go with Bill Walton. Oh. Bill Walton, before he goes on the air, I'm convinced takes a couple pulls off of the bong. Oh, he has to. Yeah. Like he's after, a hippie for sure. Oh, God, after yeah. watching the the Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls documentary where they had the little segment on Bill Walton and how he was a hippie back in the day, I was like, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Oh, he wears tie dye everywhere he goes. Yeah, right. he, he follows the Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead, yeah. He's a big time hippie. <laughs> uh Tim Tebow versus Peter King. Uh, Tebow. Cause, cause, he's a man of faith, Greg. Peter, Peter King. P- Peter King's got a backing. <coughs> I'm going with Tebow. You guys are going to hell. Mark, Mark May versus Terry Bradshaw. Terry, Terry Bradshaw. Bradshaw. Uh, Darren Ravel versus Vern Lundquist. Greg, you just answer it. I don't know either. I don't want to go Vern Lundquist just because he was so awesome in Happy Gilmore. So who's the other one? Uh, Darren Ravel. Darren Ravel. Darren Ravel, yeah. then. Yeah. Uh, Phil Sims versus Jay Mariotti. Oh, it's got to be Jay Mariotti because he got arrested for uh, sexual misconduct and got kicked off of oh, ESPN. That's why he's gone. Yeah, yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah he was on around the horn. Obviously, yep. he wasn't there, so you, go- just- I, you Google him. <laughs> and yeah, all right, Jay. Jay, yeah, for sure. Bill Simmons versus John Roth- Rothstein. Simmons. Yeah, Bill Simmons. Bomani Jones versus Michael Wilbon. Bomani Jones. Bomani Jones. <laughs> Schefter versus Jamel Hill. Jamel Hill. Yeah, she's way more annoying. I feel like they just put every personality on here because some of these I'm like, they're not even annoying. Yeah. Chris Broussard versus College Spin. Spun. I don't know the other one, so Broussard. Yeah, Broussard. Yeah, College Spun, also the people that put this bracket together, so I feel like they just threw themselves in there. Seth Remember Davis? when Chris Broussard was like so much more of a name? I used to follow yeah. him on Twitter just he because was like he was huge. like huge. He, he was the guy to, 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 that would, he's the Adam Schefter. The Schefter's breaking basketball. nose, yeah. yeah. And now it's Woj. Yeah. Seth Davis versus David Pollock. Seth Davis. Yeah. Chris Berman versus Matt Jones. By far, Chris Berman. I'm sorry that you lost your wife about a year or so ago. Are you? But you are the most like annoying it. human being on the planet. Whoop! Dude, he yeah. is a We have our top ten list, or just as many as I feel like talking because they're going to give me a certain amount of airtime. Yeah. Chris Berman is a goat. Yeah. He's the best. Uh, Skip Bayless versus Mike Bianchi. Bianchi? <laughs> Since we're going annoying, I'm going to go Skip Bayless. I respect him, but he's annoying as hell. He's like Stephen A. Smith. Just he's not as bad. We'll he's go Skip. Worse. Skip is terrible. Mike Greenberg versus Mike Golick. Uh, senior? Uh, yes, we're going to go senior. Oh, this <sighs> this hits home for Greg here. Yeah, because here's the thing. I, I like, like them battle. both, 
But Greenberg is more of the metrosexual wussy. So if we're going most annoying, I cannot put Golik through because I love the Golik family. I do I'm you like? Greenberg. I like Junior better than Senior. I think okay. I listened to his show on at three o'clock. Yeah, with he's him, great with him and uh, Agumake. Well, yeah. she Agumake. shows up when she wants. Like, yeah. why is her name even on the show? Well, Just call it Golik Junior. Well, when she's not in basketball, then she's on. But right. it's a crock. It's a professional athlete. It's a crock of shit. So focus on that. Why do you get two? I just I think that Gol Golik Junior has such like this amazing, you know, speech pattern and his vernacular and his knowledge of the English language yeah. is so incredible. Notre Dame. Yeah. yeah. Did you see him telling on uh Highly questionable about how he peed his pants during. A yes, <laughs> yeah, I saw that on YouTube. Okay, and then it, what was funny about it was he was then on around the horn like the whole week. It's like it's like they're getting they wanted him to talk about you know, more stories. Peeing his pants, yeah. I'm gonna go Greenberg. so Greeny, yeah, Greenberg Greeny. for sure. Just, and Greenberg, I feel like he wants to be like Chris Berman, like with a lot of his. No, he wants to be he like he thinks he, he's the man. No, yeah. he he wants to be Matt Lauer. I think if he had it his way, he doesn't even want to be on sports. Yeah, I think that he wants to be the host of the Today Show or whatever you know morning show. I actually agree with that. Uh, Jason Whitlock versus everybody's favorite Poppy Lebetard. We're going annoying. You got to go Whitlock. Yeah, Whitlock. I do not want Lebe Poppy. Poppy is... I don't want Poppy moving on. I love that no. man. Yeah. If you lose in this, you win. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paul Feinbaum versus Michelle Beadle. Paul Feinbaum. Paul Feinbaum. Michelle Beadle. Michelle Beadle. Yeah. Yeah. Lover. Uh, Charles Barkley versus Woody Page. Woody oh. Page. Woody Page is amazing. The notes he writes behind oh, him. the chalkboards. Yeah. yeah. Those, are Those are funny. But, okay, I'll go Charles Barkley. Yeah. Chuck. All right. I love Charles Barkley. Though. <coughs> Mike Francesca versus SDS. Whoever the fuck that is. Francesca, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what SDS is. Uh, Jay Billis versus Deadspin. I'm going Deadspin because Jay Billis is amazing. Yeah. Uh, Colin Cowherd versus Jason McEntry. I'm going to go with McEntry because I do like Colin. Cowherd I like Colin. Yeah. All right. Jason, congratulations. Uh, Clay Travis versus Jim Rome. Jim Rome. Jim Rome is so, so annoying. fucking annoying. Which is the highest paid. Yeah. That's but, insane. To I me. mean, like. He makes like twenty million dollars a year, yeah. and Colin Coward, I think, is in second at like eight. I mean, he there's made, a big drop off. It's a huge drop off. No, he's. I went through this list a while okay. ago. I know you're wrong. Jim Jim Rome <laughs> is a 16 seed over Clay Travis is number one seed. So a little history being made in today's bracket. Wow. Rick Riley versus Todd McShay. Rick Riley. Yeah. Little too liberal for me. Uh, Aaron Andrews versus Lee Corso. Lee, Lee Corso, Corso. Aaron Andrews is a. Fox. Yeah. Uh, did you ever see that video? Yeah, I did. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> no. What I video, Mike? A Google search. Uh, Keith Olbermann versus Chris Chase. Keith Olbermann. You don't know something funny about Keith Olbermann? No, but you're going to tell me. <laughs> Keith Olbermann, the reason why he left ESPN was because it was in Bristol. There was nowhere around there, and he transferred to New York. Because he can't have a driver's license because he's got absolutely no depth perception. So he couldn't he didn't want to live in Connecticut anymore because there was nothing to do. He can only take taxis in the subway. So he was willing to take any job that, you know, was in like a big city. So when he came back to ESPN, it was only after they opened their New York studio. Interesting. Where do you get these useless fucking facts, Greg? <laughs> Where you're on the John just I hear I hear things. Uh, Kirk Herbstreet versus SB Nation. SB Nation. SB Nation. I, I hate all their. That's the dumbest. Show. Is that even Salon? No. And I love how Kirk Herbstreet brings in his adorable children on the on. Yeah, Kirk's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, Doug Gottlieb versus Ron Jaworski. <sighs> I'm gonna go Gottlieb. Didn't yeah. Jaws have cancer and like come back? No, that no, was that was Mortensen. That was Mort oh, that yeah. was Mortensen. Okay, then I'll go Jaworski. No, I'm going. I'm going Gottlieb. I don't yeah, like Gottlieb. Gottlieb. Plus, he was involved in some that point shaving. Card. Yeah, his point shaving things oh, in yeah. college. Uh, we got Max Kellerman versus all of Barstool Sports. I I like Max. So do I. So and Matt likes uh, Barstool. So, so we'll we're go gonna Barstool. Barstool. Yeah. Barstool. 
Do I, I'll just write them in on the final right now. <laughs> uh, Dick Vitale versus Jim Nance. Dick Vitale is the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Dick Vit- Jim Nance is classy. Yeah. yeah. Hello, friends. Yeah, he's classy. All right, we will go back and finish up the left side of the bracket. We've got Stephen A. Smith versus Mel Kuyper. Stephen A. Stephen A. Uh, Danny Cannell versus Mike Lupica. 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 All right. Katie Nolan versus Bill Walton. Bill, Bill Walton. Walton. Tebow versus Terry Bradshaw. 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 See, we give you the we we break it down the first one. Now we can fly through because yeah. you already have mostly our opinions. Uh, Darren Ravel versus Jay Mariotti. 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 Uh, Bill Simmons versus Bomani Jones. Bomani Bill's- Jones. Okay, I'll go with that. I really couldn't care less either one between. They're the same person. To me. I just don't like Bamani. First off, I don't like the name Bamani. Yeah. It's just weird. And he took t- he took screen time away from Poppy. Yeah. Dude, po- that the Poppy Lebetard and uh, Bomani combination probably the best show on ESPN for blasphemy. <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> Jamel Hill versus Chris Broussard. Jamel. Jamel Hill. Seth Davis versus Chris Berman. Chris Berman. Berman. All right, Stephen A. Smith versus Lupica. Stephen A. Stephen A. Uh, Walton versus Walton. Bradshaw. Walton. Bradshaw's. I'm saying Bradshaw. He's so annoying. No, nah, I like Bradshaw. We're going Walton. Have you seen him act? <clears throat> Horrible. Oh, not great. And he shows his ass a lot in his films. Yeah, when he was that. married to, uh, what's her name? Yeah, her. Um, what was that movie with Matthew McConaughey where there was oh, oh, Failure to Launch. Failure to Launch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jay Mariotti versus Bomani Jones. Jay Mariotti. Bomani. Jay Mariotti. Yeah, I knew that was. 100%. I just teed it up I for not, you, I Tevin. I stand for the Bomani Jones. Yeah, standard. clearly. Jamel Hill versus Chris Berman. Jamel. Jamel. All right. And now in the Elite Eight, we're going Stephen A. Smith versus Bill Walton. Stephen A. Yep. He's going to be hard to beat. Jeez. And then we got Jay Mariotti versus Jamel Hill. Jamel Mariotti. Hill. Jamel Hill. All right. <laughs> now going to the other side of the bracket, we have Skip Bayless versus Mike Greenberg. Skip. Jason. I don't know. Greeny. It's Greeny. It's hashtag ESPN Greeny. I'm going Greenberg. <laughs> Fuck him. I'm going Skip Bayless because he, hashtag he's greeny. terrible. But hashtag Greeny is the dumbest It's the worst. Thing They're just trying to like rebrand done. him away from Golick, and it's Jesus. just the dumbest thing ever. Uh, we've got Jason Whitlock versus Paul Feinbaum. Paul Feinbaum. Paul Feinbaum. He just, oh, something about him. Put a toupee on. Char- Charles Barkley versus Mike Francesca. Barkley. Barkley. All right. Terrible. 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 His golf uh, swing is annoying. Yeah. Deadspin versus <laughs> Jason McIntyre. Or McIntyre. Sorry. Deadspin. Deadspin. Someone once said, watching watching Charles Barkley's golf swing would be like watching someone with Tourette's think. <laughs> God, Jesus. <laughs> also, not that is accurate. Oh, it is. <laughs> like, I throw my back out watching him golf. Uh, Jim Rome versus Rick Riley. Riley. Jim Rome. Yeah, Jim Rome for sure. Uh, Lee Corso versus Keith Olbermann. 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 All right. Uh, SB Nation versus Doug Gottlieb. Gottlieb. Yeah. And Barstool Sports versus Dick Vitel. Vitel. Yeah. Sorry, Matt. Yeah. Skip Bayless versus Paul Feinbaum. Feinbaum. You know what really annoys me about Skip is his gold chain. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of John Daly in like 40 years. Yeah. yeah you're, you're a 60 year old white man from Oklahoma. He's just, he's trying to like, you know, yeah, after, I'm cool, Shannon. Like, after Shannon sta- Sharp started it says smoking Skip cigars, too. Yeah. Yes. It says Skip. <laughs> After, after Shannon started smoking cigars and drinking Hennessy on air, Skip was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna break out this gold chain, and we're gonna give." It's like those. Together. It's like those necklaces that connect yeah. to the emblem that has your name. Yep. He actually has one that dank, but like that's what it like. It says Skip. He's wearing a gold <laughs> chain that says his first name. That's he might. I forgot about that. <laughs> so Skip Bayless over Paul <laughs> uh Barkley versus Deadspin. Barkley. Barkley. All right. Uh, Jim Rome versus Olbermann. Rome. Rome. And Doug Gottlieb versus Dick Vitale. Dick Vitale. Yeah. Yeah, baby! Typer dandy. 
Um, all right, and now to go from the Final Four to the championship game, Stephen A. Smith versus Jamel Hill. Stephen A. Yeah. Damn it, that's my guy. Uh, Skip Bayless versus Barkley. Skip. Skip. Uh, Jim Rome versus Dickie V. Uh, Dickie V. Yeah. Yeah, because just he's the epitome of annoying. All right, and then to meet Stephen A. Smith in the championship game, Skip Bayless versus Dickie V. You got it, Dickie V. No, you got to oh, do the first take, okay, partners. Okay, okay. Going head to head, the old first you takers. Skip, skip. Right. skip. for the crown. Stephen A. Smith versus Skip Bayless. Who you got? I I got to go Skip. See, I'm going to go Stephen A. I think you're going to lose. Even you are going to lose because Skip Bayless. I'll get like Stephen A. At least played the game. It has something to back it up a little bit. Skip just spouts off at the mouth. Right. Well, Stephen A., he's like the biggest yeah. name yeah. in yeah. sports media. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's an, it's a bit for the and, most part. And but he's like, a great right. writer. Yeah. No, he is great. And Skip, like, his fucking turtlenecks and fucking gold chains, like, go fuck yourself here knowing you won. <laughs> and here's the... Okay, so I also just saw a picture on... I don't know if it was on Twitter or whatever, but it was John Madden, like, in a wheelchair elderly big smile on his face and i thought about him like it's been 10 15 years since i've heard anything from him i haven't i thought he was I, dead exactly but i was happy to see that he was still alive enjoying life to whatever extent he can is he enjoying it that's he was smiling so <laughs> okay i'm hoping that's what happens very soon with dick vitale and he can go on enjoying <laughs> life we just don't ever hear about him again doesn't he have like some crazy disease or something he's got a fake eye <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's like 90 years old. He's he's got, I think it's just called hey, old age. Every, every now and again, he'll take his eye out. Really? Yeah, he's got a fake eye. GBG knows everything. I know. It's, it's unbelievable. I hate to. I don't want to derail the show, but we have some comments from some listeners and oh. some viewers that got some just general sports-related questions. So sure. Carl Bring it. Erstad that wants to know, do you think the Bucks are are one player away? And I assume he's talking to GBG with this. Yeah. That's Why my, do you assume that? That's, that's, my, that's my boy, Carl. Um, I don't think they're one player away. I think that they are fine with, I mean, you really can't bring in another player as long as P.J. Tucker plays the defense he does. Middleton plays the way he does. You need the most out of Lopez, and then you need Giannis to take every shot within 15 feet. Don't number anything outside of that. I think that they're going to be fine this year. Maybe moving into next year, you might want to you know, think about something. But right now, this is a season of attrition. It's going to be the healthiest team. And right now, they're one of the healthiest teams. Carl, let me chime in here and give you a real perspective. The answer is yes. <laughs> well, who do you need? <laughs> one player away. Okay, wait, wait, wait to elaborate. Right, I don't need to. He didn't ask me to elaborate. Giannis isn't enough. Middleton isn't the next That's tier. He's a good, he's a great player. He's an all-star. He's not a superstar. Yeah, but what you're learning from the Nets is when you lose a superstar, all of a sudden you don't have enough money and other players to make your team the, you know. I didn't say they needed three. They need another, they're one player away. Okay. They don't have what it takes. Okay. Drew Holiday, th it failed experiment. He's yeah. garbage. Um, and then Dan Lenahan wants to know. Lenny! Uh, on the state of baseball. Holy been, shit, Dan. <laughs> keep your comments to a sentence or two. There have been 10 no hitters so far, or close to. Uh, pitches are simply too good, and obviously they got that spider tack. Uh, so he just wants to know your guys' general thoughts on the state of baseball today. Yeah, you get rid of the spider tack. But the problem with that is guys are going to get killed because these guys have the pitchers have no control anymore. They're throwing the ball 100 miles an hour. It's going to hit someone in the head. I think that, well, I, honestly, I think it's the spider tack. I think the pitchers just have way too much control of the ball. Yeah, the only way I'll watch a baseball game is if you tell me Aaron Andrews is streaking during the second inning. I, it's it's the most boring sport. I don't Facts. care. I don't care. They should just it can go away. Does it have to I be care. Aaron Andrews? No. <laughs> I mean Blake Lively. Yeah, whoever you want, throw him in the mix. <laughs> you know, nude reporting will save baseball, and other than that, nothing will. And uh, lastly, not a question, but maybe just a slight dig at Ben's. He says he usually doesn't watch the show, but something about today makes it extra special, extra amazing. That's exactly what it is. Hey, Greg, why don't you tell us what his picture looks like there? <laughs> I'll give you a couple seconds. This is classic, Tevin. So, Nate, he'll do these selfies on Facebook, has for years. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I see it, I immediately look down because I know Greg has a comment of what he looks like. 
So right there, Greg, what's he look like? What's he look like? What's he look like in that picture? I don't know if I've ever commented on this one. Honestly, what he looks like in this picture is this is what you would see after all. This is okay. So right now, Nate looks like someone who is kind of lost in maybe like a daze or whatever, staring into like a fish tank. <laughs> and this is what the fish would see for hours. <laughs> it's like a young Jack Bauer off a of 24. Yeah, beep. But no, beep. most of, most of Nate's pictures, you, you look at him and you're like, God, he missed his calling in life because he looks like the world's greatest substitute teacher. Because <laughs> he because he has this look on his yep. face at all times where it's like he'll walk into the classroom and it'll be like, Ah, today I'm teaching physics <laughs> and he wheels in one of those old school av carts with exactly. tv and the vcr like we're watching movies today. yeah <laughs> physics no we're gonna do another movie guys but uh, oh there's amy. amy hey amy what's up amy's my buddy from high school and college right. from shot what's wakisha wakisha oh wakisha <laughs> jesus <laughs> Oh, we're gonna leave that one alone. And oh. we're move on to history one oh hey. one. Get ready to get learned, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. What? I wonder if anything important happened today. I don't think I have a <laughs> Juneteenth. Oh, I do. Name the show Juneteenth. There's nothing about it in the history segment. <laughs> on this day in history, June nineteenth. If you didn't know what today was, it is June nineteenth, eighteen forty six. The first. Officially recognized baseball game played by the Cartwright rules. The New York Nines, 23, defeat the Knickerbockers, 1, at Hoboken, New Jersey. Hoboken. And it's Hoboken. That, that is the greatest name for a team to call them the Nines. The Nines. <laughs> there's nine guys on the The team. New York Nines. 1865, Union General Gordon Granger declares slaves are free in Texas. Now the date... The end of slavery is celebrated across the U.S. as Juneteenth. So now Tevin knows what it actually is. <laughs> Only two years I late to the party. Right. 1903, <laughs> Lou Gehrig, American Baseball Hall of Fame first baseman, was born in New York City. Six-time World Series, two-time AL MVP. I like this one. 1910, Father's Day celebrated for the first time in Spokane, Washington. Now, when I when I put that on there... Was that the first time just in Washington? So, like, everybody else was doing Father's Day, kind of like Juneteenth. Like, slavery was done everywhere except Texas. I think it's the other way around. I think that in Spokane, they're like, hey, we're going to celebrate Father's Day. Then by the next year, everyone and else is like, hey, we won, we won in on this. Okay. Either way, interesting. On uh, 1946, first TV sports boxing spectacular. Joe Lewis knocks out Billy Kahn. 1956. Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin and partnership after 10 years and 16 films. Whew. Was that devastating for you when that happened? I got over it. You know, you just got to move on. I mean, it's next man up. You'd basically seen all 16 films, I had was... all their posters up in your college dorm room in 1956. Oh, yeah. 1967, Paul McCartney admits on TV that he took LSD. <gasps> yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. 1984, this is Greg's favorite musician of all time. Still has his poster. Weird Al Yankovic gives free live performance at the Del Mar Fair. 19- he looks exactly the same now as he did back in the 80s. Oh, yeah. He's well, he has episode. to. It's marketing. Yeah, he's on the episode of the Goldbergs, and he looked exactly the same. I'm like, that was like 30 years ago. Good for him. He looks like he's related to Michael Bolton. Yeah. It's the hair. It's like if Michael Bolton and Carrot Top had a kid. Yeah. 1992, Batman Returns, starring Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, and Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, is released. That was a good one. Yeah. 2000. Sounds weird to say. 2000. NBA Finals. Lakers beat the Pacers 116-111 in Game 6 to win their franchise first title in 12 years. Who is the MVP, Greg? Um, Shaq. Correct. And lastly... And Bessley. 2016, the Cavs beat the Warriors in Game 7. First team to overcome a 3-1 deficit. And Greg, who is the MVP of that? I'm going to go with LeBron James. James. You Uh, just got learned, suckas. Greg, help your girl Amy out. Since she just got a signed Bucks jersey. Last name Bogut. Who is he? Andrew. Andrew Bogut. He was the first overall... 
draft pick by the Bucks. This would have been probably two thousand one. Was it was it that long ago? Yeah, I think so. I think I was already. But he played for Utah, and he's Australian. But he actually had a really good career in uh, in basketball. But he, I mean, after a while, he jumped around. But he's a big guy, seven foot one. Andrew Bogut. He made money. He didn't have a really good career. Yeah, I think he does. He have a ring with the Warriors. I think he does. See, that's just it. Is he jumped around? But he, I think that he played like minutes for the Warriors when they needed a big man. When they, when the Splash Brothers were. Amy, I'm going to tell you right now. You can get more if Greg signed that godforsaken ugly hat than you can for a signed Andrew Bogut Bucks jersey. Use that when you're cleaning up the kitchen. Just. It's it's worthless. Yeah. Tell you, I mean, good for your son. That's cool, but yeah. let's be honest. Her son Jackson. All right, and now we're moving on to Would You Rather. No. Yeah. Would Look you at rather, the board. <laughs> would you rather have three feet or three hands? Ooh. If, I could, if there was a way to run faster with three feet, but I'm not a big runner. I'm going to go three hands. I mean, yeah, I got more. I do more with my hands, yeah. so I feel like an extra run would come in handy. Where would it be? Would if I had a, would it be like coming out of here, or would it be like directly out? Oh, you can put it wherever you want. And could I then use my cell phone in the car if I had a third hand? Well, because your eyes would still have to look at your phone. Uh, Correct, yeah. Kevin. <laughs> yeah, so uh. that's that's the big thing there. So no, <laughs> no, you can't. Uh, would you rather have all your shirts be two sizes too big, or all of them be one size too small? Mike already wears everything one size too small. It's called a medium. Yeah, you definitely got to go with the medium. I uh, one size too small though is no. I'd go. You're gonna walk around in a tall tee. Yeah. No. I'd I'd rather go one size too small. I don't want to look like I'm drowning. You do. Look at your shirt. Can you, look no. at how wrinkly that is, Twist Nation. This has been sitting in the back of my car because I know that every episode I'm like I'm a game time decision. <laughs> That's true. He's got his twist bag in the back seat. You can tell it's been there for three months. Uh, would you rather lose your sense of taste or your sense of smell? Smell. Smell by far. Duh. Uh, Want to eat? Yeah. Right. Would you rather only be able to whisper or only be able to shout? Whisper. Yeah. You're already a yeller. Yeah. Uh, that'd be difficult for you. Would you rather li- it would. <laughs> would you rather live the rest of your life with a, with silent but uncontrollable gas or loud <laughs> uncontrollable sneezing? Gas. I'll go with gas. Yeah. Cuz I don't sneezing's coming out of my mouth. I need, you know. Then if I'm watching like driving, I can't see and shit. And, and you can always like- you can always blame the farting on someone else. Because it's silent, so you can just crop dust all you want and crop just just dust. just look around at other people and give them disgusting looks. You can't hide a sneeze. You did it. All right. Ben, God, stop. <laughs> Would you rather be able to freeze time or travel in time? Travel. I want to freeze time because you know what? You, right before you walk into a bank, you freeze time, go in there, grab all the money, and then come out, unfreeze time. Time travel just seems like I'd fuck that up. No, you know, see, I, I would have frozen time the second you put that hat on. I would have froze time, and I would have went home <laughs> if I could have done it. Or I would have traveled back in time to right when you saw the hat, and I would have smacked you in the face. <laughs> so both can come in handy with that. Uh, would you rather live without music or live without television? Music. music. I love music. That's a tough one. It is really tough. But... Would you rather? You got to pick one. Would you rather know how you're going to die or when you're going to die? I, I hate this question. I hate it too. When? Yeah, I'd go with when. Because, I mean, what's the difference if you know how? Yeah, I'd rather know when. Yeah, right. The especially, result's the same. Especially if it was like it's you're going to die in a car accident, and now every time you drive a car, you're like, is this the last day? I'm yeah. Oh, yeah, here. good call. Yeah. yeah. Or a plane, then it's like, I'll never get on one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would you rather have your dream job or find your true love? True love. True love. I'm already there. Would, would you rather? Aww. I believe last one. Would you rather wrestle a bear or an alligator? Oh fuck! I saw a bear the other day when I was leaving work. Um, granted, I work in the middle of nowhere. Um, wrestle. A, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with alligator because you can get away from an alligator. 
You just get on top of it. Yeah. You can get on top of it. You can also, if you run Put down a hill. Put it in a full Nelson. If you go, if you also, if you run down a hill in a zigzag line, they have so much back weight that they'll start spinning. If you ever get chased by an alligator. But like okay. their I skin. Think that was a Mythbusters episode back in the day where that's not really, I mean, it's true, but alligators just don't chase you. There, yeah. I just feel like I have a better, I don't want to, I don't. Bears wanna, are so muscular. Yeah, I no, fight bears, bear. bears going to. Except you're if dead. you're a chick and there's puppies around, yeah, then you might have a chance. But yeah, I mean, alligator, I guess, yeah. gross. One thousand percent. Yeah, bear will fuck you up, end your life. That's, you know, how, you know when you're gonna die when you fight a bear. Yeah. If Steve Irwin can rest in peace, if he can wrestle alligators, then I'll take my chance. Do you know how much money his kids make right now? Off what? Oh, shit. Like being the next generation crocodile hunters. His daughter is like a multi, multi millionaire. Like, how? Oh, I've never even heard of him. I forgot what her name is. It's like Brianna. Yeah, I knew Bo- he had kids, but I didn't know. I didn't know they were crocodile house. hunters or had a show. The uh, Owens. No, it's just her. She's like a. She must be a smoke show, then. She is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are moving on to retweet or delete. Scrolling through everybody's Twitter feeds and yeah. picking out the best topics. Topic number one. Bruce Arians says the Buccaneers quarterback Kyle Trask is not that far away from where Andrew Luck was mentally as a rookie. Retweet or delete? Delete. Delete. This is fake news. This is fake news, and this is Bruce Arians saying, you know what? I'm kind of sick of Tom Brady getting all the headlines. I got to say something. Yeah. Delete. Look at our shiny new. Yeah. Delete, delete, delete. Fuck Kyle Trask. All right. Kevin Durant's reported personal bodyguard was suspended after an on-court shove of P.J. Tucker. Retweet or delete? Re-fucking-tweet. This just shows how big of a bitch Kevin Durant is. He gets in a scuffle. His bodyguard is in the stands, gets in a scuffle, and his bodyguard comes out on the court in the middle of a professional basketball game to defend this motherfucker like you have to be the biggest bitch that's like fifth grade basketball me getting into and my mom coming out on the court don't touch my son like how embarrassed are you i would not only suspend him if i'm the nba i would fire him if i were kevin durant for making me such a weasel but that's probably kevin durant probably said to him you gotta do this because it's not. He a, probably did. It's not a fan coming out to fight Kevin Durant. If that was the case, then yeah. The, the, but it's another player, right? Who's defending you and schooling this, your ass? When I heard he that, yeah. Such a, I, I say retweet it, and I want, and then I want one of Kevin Durant's burner, burner accounts to retweet it again. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's the best line I've heard today. That's the best fantastic. Part of the story is that him and PJ Tucker are like best friends. So right. It's not like he was in danger of getting. His shit kicked in. Yeah. I was going to say I was going to go make a bunch of my like other accounts read, but then he comes with the Kevin Durant burner. Yeah. That was fucking that, classic GBG. GBG. That's the best moment you've had on this show since moving to this studio. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it is. That was great. Um, Next up, we've got Dak Prescott leaving Adidas for a five-year deal with the Jordan brand. Uh, I'm retweeting it because he should have, first off, Adidas. Come, I mean, Dak signed with Adidas because nobody else was there. Like, that's all he had on the table. Mm-hmm. Guarantee it. So now he's got this new contract. You know, he's swagging for days, and Jordan comes. It's like, well, yeah. Like, I, I take Jordan over anything. I would retweet this for one reason, because I want, I don't like the Cowboys, but I do love it when you advertise how much money, like, the quarterback is making, because when they don't make the playoffs, and when they, you know. What gif they, would you attach to your retweet? The yep one. Yep. <laughs> the little candy going, yep. Yeah, that's, that's what we need. We need to respond to all of these with, with a gift. gift. Yeah. That'd be great. Well, like that sure. Next week. Uh, <laughs> uh, lastly, Barry Bonds and his miniature schnauzer compete at the Westminster Dog Show. Good, he's doing something. Yeah, I'm deleting this all day. Is I could d- give two shits what Barry Bonds is doing. Does he give if Barry Bonds. Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Fuck! The schnauzer comes out looking like in the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> you guys both just fucking stomped on my touchdown calls during this. Fucking A. Next year, you see the same miniature schnauzer with a head that's just fucking <laughs> huge. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> next up, oh, loaded questions. I should probably be prepared for this one as well. Yeah, that's you. You got a lot of work to do back I'm, there. I'm a hustler back here. All right. And this card that I definitely looked at beforehand. Hold on one second. Yep. There's been a lot of comments on the show. Has Matt commented at all? Because <laughs> You know Benz doesn't watch the show. If he's <laughs> yeah, he here. ain't. Let's, home. Let's I told you, he's got a pork roast shoved up his ass and a spoonful of fucking ice cream yeah but he's got to have something he's got to be watching something is he watching he ain't next- watching us no, ben's ben's is not in the what comments dick. he's not sliding in any what dms yeah anymore. he's on vacation he says i'm pretty sure when i was on vacation last i went live on the beach yeah you did from so, craig from craigans yeah so beautiful brainerd minnesota fuck off oh, matt niswa and if he does if he does comment don't put it up I don't even, no airtime. Delete. <laughs> no airtime. There's your twi- retweet or delete. Yeah, delete. Delete. Right. delete. All right. First question. If your body was cremated, where would you want your ashes sprinkled? U.S. Bank Stadium. I was talking about this with Steen last night, literally talking about it. I want uh, old Vikings training camp in Mankato. A little bit there. A little bit at U.S. Bank. You know, maybe you and Matt could snort a line of it. <laughs> Wasn't there wasn't there a stadium that like they do that where they like you can bury your urn? It's like at Yankee Stadium or something like that. I don't want my urn there. I want to be played on by oh, the Vikings. You want it like dusted? Okay. Yeah, I don't need a fucking area like oh here he is in the bank. No, just I don't know. I'm not really like in love with any like. Place Lambeau I go, Field. I, I would guarantee not, you'd be fertilizing Lambeau Field. No, for the, rest of the reason I don't want to go to Lambeau because you know how many other people have had that have done that. You know, there you hear stories all the time about people run out of the yeah. field and then they. Say it doesn't dumping. have to be dump the jar, Greg. You could be fucking sprinkled in every fifty states if you wanted to be. You know what? Yeah, then let's 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 put me in with the little, fertilizer. Yeah. At, at Lambo, and then, you know, like when Rudy was out there with that one little push thing. Oh, I, that's what I want. Do done. I remember? Yeah, that's what I want done. <laughs> like it was yesterday. Be put into like the paint sprayer that they yeah. use to paint the lines. Exactly. <laughs> there we go. Uh, question number two: How many keys are on your keychain right now? <sighs> one. You can just guesstimate. Two, three, four, five, six. I think I have seven. Who's calling you? Um, so, someone about my uh, well, someone from Oregon. So I guess it's about my auto insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Since I don't know a soul in Oregon. No, it's not insurance. It's uh, my we warranty. warranty. Yeah. One. It's a love you should answer. Put him on speaker. Here. Put him on speaker, Greg. Oh, damn, damn it! <laughs> Good call. I have. Here's the funny thing. I have. Are you a janitor? I have four keys, and two of them are for a place I don't even live at anymore. I just never took them off. Yeah, I got two for work, mailbox, apartment, my key. I don't have a car key. It's like an unlock lock. I don't know, seven maybe. Yeah, I got five. So. Uh, What is your favorite ice cream? Peanut butter cup. Butterfinger. See, not for a... Like, if I get a blizzard, I'm going all day. I'm going to go Snickers. Butterfinger, Heath bar. Reese's Pieces cup, Heath or, bar. What? But if you're going like traditional, then I'm going cookie dough. Yes, let's go. Cookie dough is good. But no, I'm going to go cookies and cream, Reese's yeah. peanut butter cup Okay. ice cream. All right. And then lastly, on a scale from one to ten, how well organized are you? Nine. Yeah. Okay. 9.1, just so I'm and, better than Greg. And, and it annoys the bejesus out of most people in my life. Because, like, I'll be with, I'll be with Becky and I'll be like, um, what time are we going to uh, your sister and brother and brother's house, or sister-in-law and brother's house? She's like, uh, Greg, that's in four days from now. <laughs> yeah. Like, I need to know. <laughs> right. I need to map things out until then. <laughs> I need to know when I'm showering on Tuesday based on where I'm going to be on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Amazing. that's great. All right, and now we are moving on to our penultimate topic or segment, the Pop Culture Happy Hour. Kick it off, Greg. All right, hold on. So I saw a funny story, and saw a funny story on the news. So you have, um, a while back, there was a $731 million Powerball jackpot. <laughs> Who won? Well, Nobody. the only thing that we know right now is that the winner was from a city, Lanakakanin, Maryland. 
Now, here's the funny thing. They actually refer to the city as Coney because it's so hard to pronounce. Lana Cockling. Lana Cockling. But it is an old mining community. The like average household income, unfortunately, is like $25,000. It's a completely beat up town that has no money. So people are all like, hovering to this place to try to find out who won, there was a suspicion that it was an elderly gentleman and his partners, how it, re- how it was referred to. So I don't know if that's a, just an unmarried couple or whatever it is. No, Greg. But what? It, bottom line is, the funniest thing about this is people are already talking about how this money could be used to rebuild the community and stuff, and no one even knows who won it. Someone has been like living in poverty with like seven hundred and thirty one dollars in a bank account because Maryland is a state where you don't have to Oh tell them who you are. So it's one of those things where it's like, I'll tell you who won. Is Minnesota a state? I don't know. I don't know. Because honestly, th- if I had it, I'd love for people to know. Yeah. Th- th- then you can tell people what you really feel about them. Right. Oh a hundred percent. Right. Cause there'd be certain family members of mine, like Greg would get more money. And they might not get any, and they'd be like <laughs> We're family, and it's like, are we? <laughs> I don't actually. Matt and I talked about this one time. We talked about how much money, and I was like, when I was kind of li- living, you know, it's like you and Matt would would come in way before like so many other people, right? It's like it's but, crazy. But so yeah, think, they could know easily. But it was like twelve hundred people, and I'm like, you want to know who won? It's one day you're gonna wake up, and there's gonna be someone not there, anymore, right? It's that and guy. That's the guy who won. Yeah, you'd know by face by f- my Facebook post that I won. I'd tell everybody <laughs> immediately. A like, guy won. <laughs> you suck. Have a big check. All right, so I'm gonna break this down by the next month. I think fifty crazy statistics you won't believe are real. The average drunk driver drives under the influence more than 80 times before being arrested for the first time. Unfortunately, I was that was told to me in a lecture after my second one. <laughs> Fewer than 2% of NCAA student athletes go on professional level. I'd guess 2% to be high. I was going to say, I, I th- yeah. So one third of adults still sleep with a comfort object. This is crazy. It, unless you're talking about a pillow. Well, that's comfort object. Okay. Because I sleep with a pillow. Okay. Cause my one pillow's for my head. My other one's to yeah. hold. Okay. I don't hug it. I'll put one and between my legs. What's what's the person? What was the percentage of that? One third of adults. That would be thirty three percent. Jeez. Thirty three point three 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 three. Yeah. Yeah, that's high. Yeah. The average American generates nearly four point five pounds of trash each day. I'd believe that. That's a lot of trash, though. Yeah. Like. A candy bar wrapper is like ounces. Yeah. That's a lot. People need to finish their food. Filthy fucking animals. Over the past century, I love this one, Michael has been the most popular male baby name. 44 times most popular over the past century. I believe that. Kevin, you know how many things are in a century? How many years? Yeah. As in things. 100? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Things? So 44. <laughs> what do you mean how many things? How many things are in a century, man? <laughs> years! Tevin? Come on! The global rate for washing hands after using the toilet is under 20%. Wow. Filthy fucking animals. See, like, your kids, uh, they're five. Washing. Yeah, ugh. They're five now. Yeah. Because, okay. So they, my kids are at that age, and your kids probably are still in that learning phase of it. But I will clean up the bathroom a hundred times out of a hundred if I see like a little bit of uh, soap schmutz because it's like you know what then I know they're using it right oh my and your kids probably make the same kind of mess yeah but they are like anal about yeah. washing their hands yeah. like big time so good for them more than thirty six million U S adults cannot read above the third grade level wow third grade level. For those of you keeping track at home, that's not very high. (laughs) (laughs) They're not watching this show. That's crazy. The average American received food from a food bank. Oh, what? Wrong one. The average American eats nearly 13 pounds of ice cream per year. I can believe that. What's what's one tub? Like a five, you mean like, like a five gallon? One? No, like not this one. Like, like a pint. pint. Like the no, one, the like pint's the years. little one. Yep. Like your normal. A quart. A quart. A quart. How much? How much do you think that weighs? Two pounds? Probably. Then I can believe it. Yeah, because yeah. I can't take it down at once, but that's a yeah. two-timer. And I, I can take it down twice. I don't buy a lot of ice cream because when you have six people that live in the house, you don't have a lot of freezer space. we got to get a deep freeze. Sure. But 
you know, Ed. I, yeah. I probably go to Chief. Dairy, I probably go to Dairy Queen 20 times a year and then you get a blizzard each time. That weighs a half pound. You're there. It's not right. hard to get there. No, that one doesn't surprise yeah. me that much. One in seven Americans receive food from a food bank. One in seven seems... What's a food bank? I think that's like a... Like a like, yeah, like the food shelf. Type oh, of a food shelf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Food. I've never heard it referred to as a food bank. Or probably like at a, I mean, it's one in food. seven, I get. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, if that many fucking people can't read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not okay. surprising. I, I want to know. How, I shouldn't say that. I, I can't rip on. Okay. I'm going to say it. <laughs> yes. I want to know. You know, do you guys know what a Venn diagram is? No. Yes. Okay. So, no, you don't, so you Kevin. Have two circles He's fucking have, lying back two there. Two circles. One meets. Yeah. The, you, yeah. Have, you have this universe of people, and you have this universe of people. You want to know how much that combines? Oh yeah. I want to know how many people are who are in the universe of that can't read above a third grade level, and how many people are in a food bank. How many of that overlaps? A hundred percent. Say, I think it's in the nineties. It makes a perfect circle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two left here, and more than half a million people in America experience homelessness. A night. More than half a million people Actually, a night. I would think that it would be higher. Half a million? If you look at home, like home. Fuck that. I thought there was half a million just in Portland. Yeah. yeah. Or like out in California on Venice Beach. Right. Yeah. Matt, if you do want to comment on that would be the how many homeless buddies you had back <laughs> in the day. Yeah, that's low to me. I. It's a high number, but like when you put it in into perspective. Things. Yeah. We collectively receive about 2.4 billion robocalls per month. And some during this show. Right. right. Well, good. That's all At I got. At least they tell me where they're from now. You know, because it's like, I don't know anybody in Oregon. So I'm not going to answer the phone. Yeah. And they don't say, is this Mike? They say, hi, Mike. Yeah. And it's like, don't fucking ever call me yeah. again. <laughs> My kids love it because they both have cell phones. Dad, guess what? I got a call about my car's extended warranty, and I don't even drive. <laughs> like, yeah, because you're 10. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, and then we got one more pop culture happy hour topic for you guys. The Los Angeles Lakers workplace comedy from Mindy Kaling, modern, the Modern Family executive producer, is ordered to start on Netflix. So they are doing... Uh, let's see what it says here. Netflix's newest comedy will take the phrase corporate team bonding to a whole new level where they essentially are having a 10 episodes, season one, about how about the Lakers front office. Or not about them specifically, but in that vein. Are they calling and, you again? Yeah. Hold on, <sighs> hold on Tevin. <clears throat> Hello, it's Greg. Oh, Hello? You, Hello? You never say your name right off the bat. I always ask. It's business thing. Hello? Oh. You guys aren't answering. See, you can look at the... insurance rates have dropped up to 50% in your area. Based on your zip code, you could potentially see a significant savings. Oh, I bet you can. To speak to a specialist yeah. about a free quote, press 1. Yes. Be added... Oh! oh! <laughs> These are, you actually want to talk to us? <laughs> Click. No, I'm on, I bet you I'm not on some, like, I'm going to get 10 times more right. calls. Oh, shit. So Netflix is coming up with a half-hour comedy about the Lakers. Yep, Jeannie Buss and Linda Rambis are going to be a part of the producing production team, and then as well as some people that worked on The Office are going to be on. I was going to say, Office isn't Office. Mindy Kaling? Isn't that Kelly Kapoor? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the Mindy Project or whatever. Yeah. See, I and the Lakers they have another show I believe coming to HBO Max that's like a drama. I was going to say the comedy one is going to be like Schitt's Creek. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be great. You get producers from Modern Family and, and Parks and Rec and stuff like that, and you make it like a workplace comedy. To me, you reel me in with sports mm -hmm. anyway, and then you're going to make it fun. The Lakers, I mean, sweet. So I'm all for that. And I'm curious to see how close to reality they get. Like, are they going to take shots at any players, former or Right. Will it be? Day? Yeah. Is it going to be like real life, or is it going to be all make-believe? Right. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Sweet. All right, well, that's all we got. GBG, take us home. All right, so today is Juneteenth, but tomorrow is Father's Day. And uh, what I want to let everyone know, we do a lot of just crap on this show. We rip on each other and all this stuff. But you know what? There's never a better feeling I have this weekend. Um, it's just me and my daughter, Olivia. Connor's up fishing. It's just something that he does with his grandpa. But I've had plenty of weekends with him. But there's nothing that gives me more joy than seeing, like, Mike with his kids with their, you know, bats in hand doing T-ball. But by the way, are both your kids left-handed or was that just the hand that they held their Must bats? have been the hand, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, when 
Kinley comes into town and watching her with the kids and it's just watching dads just be with their kids is like the coolest feeling in the world, you know, because I get to see it like, cause now that my kids are 13 and 10, I get to see all the stuff that like Mike does that I used to do with my kids back when that was that age or when my kids were that age and watching other people, it's not just exclusively us, but it's just seeing people just get the joy to be a dad is just unbelievable. You know, my dad's probably one of the most avid watchers and listeners of this show. Love him to death. Thanks, Chief. And, you know, it's just, it's so much fun because now I know I'm going to go home and the first thing I'm going to do with my daughter is she's going to play the initials game. You know, and we're going to replay it. And it's just something that she just likes to do. But anyway, to all the dads out there, happy Father's Day. Love all of you. Don't take any moment for granted this weekend. Love that. Happy early Father's Day, Greg. Yeah. Dima Cash to end out the show. Episode 67 in the books. Not a GBG list show, a Matt list show. We'll see ya. TBD, Twist Nation. That's all I gotta say.